Hey gang, it's Steve with Guitar Center. Today we're hanging out at Gold Diggers in Los Angeles and we're with Dan from Focusrite. We're talking about the new Vocaster interfaces. How you doing, Dan? Great, Steve. How about yourself? I'm living the dream. So let's just set the table here with our setup. Okay. We're going to start with the Vocaster 2. Sure. What do we have going on? You have two mic inputs, two headphone outputs. You have a camera connection to record to your camera. You have a phone connection so you can record to and from your phone. So you can record on your phone or you can take phone calls. And you have monitor outputs. And then really great technology like auto gain and the enhance feature. Excellent. And so there's another form factor available. Mm -hmm. That's sure. the Vocaster 1. Correct. Let's talk about that one. Sure. The, really, the only difference is one less mic pre, one less headphone output, and it doesn't have Bluetooth connection that the Vocaster 2 has. And that's for taking phone calls? Exactly. Taking phone calls or bringing sounds in from uh, your phone or iOS device. Cool. So these are also available in studio bundles. Can you talk about what comes in those? Sure. Each one of them comes with uh, its own microphone, like the Vocaster 2 comes with the microphone I'm using, which is more of a broadcast style microphone. And the Vocaster 1 Studio comes with the microphone you're using, which is a little bit more compact so people can easily take it on the road with them. Excellent. Just so you guys know, what you're hearing today is our voices through these mics into the Vocaster interface, into Hindenburg, and into your ears. So the one mm -hmm. comes with the DM1. That's the mic I'm on now. It is, yes. Cool. And then the two comes with the DM14V, is DM, that right? DM14V is correct, yes. Okay, great. And how did you guys end up choosing uh, which mic comes with which setup? For the Vocaster 1, we chose the uh, more portable factor because it's a handheld mic, so they can put it in their bag and travel. We did some market research, and it looks like that customer is a little bit more of the customer on the go. They want to do their recording anywhere they are, if they're in a hotel room or using co-work spaces and things like that. For the Vocaster 2, we wanted a little bit more broadcast-style microphone, which is why we chose that form factor. Cool. And then both setups come with these headphones. Correct. Yes. Cool. So when Focusrite decides we're going to make a dedicated interface that's for podcasters, what sort of research and background do you guys do in recognizing maybe how big the market is or what people are looking for? Sure. Well, we, we discovered that the audio interface market is way larger than just recording music. It's all kinds of content uh, from podcasts to voiceover to audiobooks. And no one was really at that time addressing the spoken word angle on recording. So we did a lot of research by going to events and actually talking to podcasters individually and discovering what their needs are. And I think there's no denying that there's just a tremendous amount of podcasts out there. I think the current number is like two and a half million different podcasts, which has grown tremendously in the last couple of years. Well, there are just so many comedians that need to talk to each other about how hard comedy is. So that's why I think there are so many podcasts. So in terms of like maybe like the top five features that podcasters were looking for, how did you guys come to narrowing that focus? And then how does that get incorporated into the vocasters? We looked for some common threads between what the podcaster needs were. Ease of use and sound quality were really the ones that were the biggest. And that's why we came up with features like auto gain and the enhance button, which with the push of a button, you can set your own gain level without having to know what gain is because podcasters aren't audio engineers. They care about sound quality, but really they're storytellers and they want to get to telling their story as quickly as possible. So Dan, today we're set up with the Vocaster 2. Yes. Take me all the way down to the beginner level of how we would set this up. Sure. You want to get all your cables connected and everything first, get your mic connected and connect your USB cable to your computer. But then you want to make sure you get a good, strong level. That's really important, no matter what you're recording. And we made it kind of easy for podcasters because they're not audio engineers. So we put in auto gain, which is a really cool function, uh, new to focus, right? You want to give that a try? Sure. So what should I do? You just have to talk into the mic. I'm going to push a button here. You'll see a little white uh, timer. So you'll just talk at a normal volume uh, as that white timer times down. So here you go. And now your auto gain is going. Check. One, two. Check. Two. Czechoslovakia. Check. Chuck. Charles. Chester. Check. One, two. Check. And now I'm back. There you are. And it sounds great. It does sound really great. So that's incredibly easy. So... You know, we don't need to have any sort of background in engineering to just jump right in and start recording with good, strong, clear level. Right. Cool. So now if we want to change maybe like the EQ or the shape of our voice, how would we sure. do that? There's a, a way that you can do that. There's a little magic wand tool right here. 
and that toggles on the enhance feature. So there's four different uh, settings for the enhance feature. You can choose between those in the Vocaster Hub software. See, you have the same enhance feature here, but you see a little drop down window, and that's where you choose between the four different presets. So right now you're on a clean preset. You want to you want to hear what that sounds like? Okay. Sure. Here you go. Now the clean preset is on. Let's hear what that sounds like. Here I am on the clean preset. Sounds pretty clean. Sounds pretty clean. It's really a subtle difference on that one. Um, but there's a couple others. Let's see what the right one is for your voice, which is which is what is really cool about it. This one's warm, so it sounds like your voice is giving us a hug or something like that. All right. So nice and warm. Yep. Yeah. I can hear it. I can hear a bit of warmth It's a there. little bit rounder in the brightness <laughs> and warmer overall. Nice. Yeah. And uh, the next one is bright. Let's check that out. Probably more sibilance. Sibilant sounds. Yep. Yep. A lot more clarity on the top end there. My favorite, and I think most podcasters' favorite, is probably that radio voice there, where it's just kind of big and boomy uh, with that smile-shaped EQ curve on it. Check two. Check two. Chopper four coming at you live. Yeah, that's uh, got that vibe to it for sure. Sounds really good. Let's leave it on that one for you. Okay, great. All of my dreams have come true now that I have that booming radio voice. There it is. All right. So in terms of this software that we have going on here, it seems like it's pretty cut and dry, straightforward, easy to use. Can you just run us through what we're looking at? So on the top part here, you're going to have the same controls. You have uh, a mute button here, um, just like you do on the unit itself. Uh, you have the enhance button and the auto gain button. And of course, auto gain isn't the only way to set gain. You can set it yourself if, if you want to just do that. You can use either the slider here or the encoder on the unit itself. Uh, and that's the same on the host and the guest. One thing really cool about Vocaster is you can use your phantom power either on host or guest. So most of them, they turn on in banks. But in this situation, uh, you can turn it on one or the other. So easily assignable. Easily assignable. Uh, and then on the bottom half, that's the mix window. So Vocaster is a mixer. It has a lot of inputs. You can connect six different sources and you can mix them all right here. And all of these channels are selectable in your DAW. So you can record them all. You can multi-track all of the different inputs, including the show mix. So as you see, we're recording uh, both of our microphones and we're recording them mixed as well, which is the show mix that you're seeing. Excellent. So... In terms of like the overall flow of creating a podcast, mm -hmm. that must have been pretty important sure. when you guys were doing the research on this. So can you talk a little bit about the, some of the feedback you got from customers in terms of just putting it all together? Sure. We wanted to know what they wanted for all of the different shows. So, you know, if they want to bring in sounds from somewhere, you know, if they want to play their bumpers uh, during the show or they want to bring in sound effects uh, through some kind of app, we wanted to give them those options, which is why we have the loopback channels. Um, so that means you can take any computer audio and you can play it and it'll show up in the show mix and it'll show up multi-track as well. So you can you can always eliminate that if it's poorly timed or if you have too many uh, air horns in your podcast. Now, I've never heard of a podcast that has too many air horns, but <laughs> so that's like, for instance, if you want to show the guest a video that you have on your computer, yeah. get their reaction, et cetera, you can play that back and it would be seamlessly incorporated into the audio. Exactly. Cool. And that comes through as its own track? It does. Yes. There's two stereo loopback channels. So you could take that from two different sources. Um, so, you know, let's say, for example, one loopback source could be a Zoom call or something like that. And then the other one could be that, like you're saying, like a video and get their reaction. So you could even easily zoom in a third guest mm -hmm. or more yep. through the computer. Exactly. Focusrite is extremely well known in the interface game uh, with the little red box on everybody's home recording setup, yep. the Scarlet, um, but also the Claret. Yes. So what sort of feedback did you get from users who were podcasting with those interfaces, but weren't necessarily musicians. Sure, um, especially with the, the Scarlet is the best selling audio interface in the world. There's nearly 5 million of them sold. So it's a huge community of creators that are already using Scarlet's as interfaces. It's that red box, like you were saying, that's on everybody's desk. So when we started working with podcasters, they were already using Scarlet. And we just went to try to get feedback. So one of the big things, the Scarlet 2i2, which is my favorite Scarlet and most podcasters, it has two mic inputs, but it only has one headphone output. So we wanted to design it so that it's friendly for podcasters. So you don't have to have a workaround. We wanted to eliminate those workarounds. So having to have a splitter or only one person has headphones. There's a couple things that are updated in this. It's not just a Scarlet. There's a bunch of new innovative features for us like DSP on board. The Shure SM7B is no doubt one of the most 
popular broadcast and podcasting mics out there, but it requires a lot of gain. So that's another thing. We put a lot of gain into this. So 70 dB of gain available on Vocaster as compared to somewhere in the high 50s for both Scarlett and Claret and most audio interfaces for that matter. So we wanted to, you know, eliminate the need for a gain booster. So we just looked at the needs um, that Scarlett and Claret weren't hitting and, and we put those into, into this box. So for like your typical dynamic broadcast mic, you might need to use like a cloud lifter or something like that. Yeah. And in this case, the, there's enough gain built in that you don't need, you know, one more link in the chain. Right. You know, they, they go to Guitar Center and they buy their Scarlett and they buy their microphone and, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like they expected. And then they realize they have to go back and buy another product. So that's another $100, $150 that that cost is eliminated. So it sounds like you guys are building in tons of tech specs, uh, but you're making the interface simple, like simple one button push. So how do you strike that balance? And then how do you service, you know, in the sort of technology space, there are sort of spec hunters that are always out there looking for something like mm -hmm. that. But for somebody who is coming to this as a beginner, they don't even know what specs to look for. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys strike the balance between driving ultimate simplicity, but also servicing that legacy customer that's sort of used to looking for specs? You know, we're known for good audio quality and we put that into this. So you're going to have um, similar sound quality to Scarlett or maybe even improved sound quality to Scarlett. It's just something we don't advertise because a lot of podcasters just expect the high quality. Uh, but we do have that. Um, you know, we have the specs available if you do a deep dive. Um, but we just made it so it's a really great sounding interface and easy to use so that anybody from the beginner to the more advanced podcaster um, enjoys their time with Vocaster. Cool. So walk me through the flow. Sure. Uh, we're set up. We have auto gained our inputs. Mm -hmm. We've set our EQ. Now we're going to record multi-track into the computer. Sure. How do we then turn that bill into a law? How do we publish it and get it out to the world? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, well, you would go to one of the publishing platforms, uh, such as Acast, and we've partnered with Acast on this, and we actually give away three months of their influencer program with Vocaster. So right out, right away, you can record everything uh, using Hindenburg, which is, which is also the included DAW or recording software. So you take that track and you publish it to Acast, and Acast is really great for hosting and monetization. So right out of the box, you know, you, you record your first episode and you have the options to start trying to monetize your show right away, which is something podcasters really want. Well, you know, that is true, Dan getting paid to hear the sound of your own voice is a dream. We all love it, right? We want to live that dream. <laughs> you know, a lot of our customers are musicians mm -hmm. and they might say, hey, I already got an interface. Uh, what is the biggest reason why they would choose a vocaster over trying to build on the existing setup that they have? You know, sometimes you can say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you know, you might want a more dedicated space uh, for your podcast, um, separate from your music space so you don't have distractions. Uh, it's really up to each individual creator what they want. Um, personally, myself, I really like the form factor. Uh, I had one of our Claret interfaces on my desk, and I just like this better because it's a lot easier just to reach over and adjust the controls, mute myself, unmute myself, and um, adjust the output as well. It's just very easy to do. When we're talking about who each one of these is for, uh, the Vocaster 1 Mm -hmm. is set up more like a uh, sort of a reporter on the run kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And the two is more of like, you're going to be settled into a studio or something like that. So when you guys are building these out and you're specking them out, you know, what sort of feedback do you get from the customer while you're building it mm -hmm. or from maybe even the internal teams, like you guys mm -hmm. are testing it out and trying it out. How does that process work? And were there any sort of like, aha moments or funny moments that happen through that process. Yeah, you know, we just wanted it to be something uh, that could go into a backpack. So it has to be something tough. You know, the Scarlet is one of those things that you can just kind of take anywhere. You know, you can throw it in your backpack. It's got that nice metal enclosure. You notice with this one, it's got a nice hard plastic enclosure. And I think the the moment that we're most proud of with that is we made a really nice, nice tough exterior that it sits on a desk really well. But that hard plastic, also you can just throw it in your bag and it's and it's solid. And the best part about that is it's made from 50% recycled materials. That's great. So for somebody who already has mics, headphones, cables, etc., 
to get this nicer form factor and the easier workflow specific to podcasts, it seems like it's a pretty low barrier to entry price wise. And it makes a lot of sense in terms of uh, workflow. Yeah, we, we wanted to keep the cost low for the podcasters. I think it's a really great price to add that form factor and get that into your workflow. Cool. In addition to being able to auto EQ ourselves and to set our own gain, uh, we have some sort of workflow functionality or show flow functionality. So we've got mute buttons. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, the ability to take phone calls. Mm -hmm. And we've got the ability to fly in other media from the computer via the loopback function. So let's start off with the mute. It's sure. a pretty simple it uh, is. exercise, but let's uh, talk about it. Sure. You know, any anytime you're podcasting, a lot of podcasters do it from their home and there's a lot of distractions there. Uh, dogs barking, children break, coming into the room, or you have to cough. Um, or you want to swear about something that the person across from you is saying and you don't want them to hear it, um, you can just hit that button. So I could... <coughs> I've been practicing my coughing. Have you been? Good. Yeah, Sounded I wanted good. to rehearse in advance of today, so... It I'm was a good cough. It. Okay, good. Thanks. So uh, then the next thing is the loopback function. So <laughs> let's get into that. If okay. we want to fly in, let's say... A video from our computer. We mm -hmm. want to show the guests something, get their reaction. Uh, how does the loopback function work? It just automatically works. So when you plug in Vocaster for the first time, all of your computer audio is going to be routed to uh, loopback one. And mix minus is already included in that. So you're not going to hear um, everything back twice, which is pretty cool. So for the absolute beginner, mm -hmm. the key vocabulary terms loopback and then mix minus, can mm -hmm. you run over what those are? Sure. Loopback is basically just that, just taking audio from your computer and being able to record it into your mix. Uh, and mix minus just means you're removing one of those voices from it. So it used to be so complicated. You used to have a bunch of different inputs and outputs and you're running cables from here to there. Uh, now it's just, it's just automatically set up. So you don't have to think about it or even know what it is. Cool. So if you get like the classic, um, radio, please turn down your phone kind of situation. Yeah. That doesn't happen. No, that doesn't happen. Okay. So we can mute ourselves. We can loop back in media from the computer. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to take a phone call, how do we do that on each one of these? Sure. It's very simple uh, to take a phone call. You plug in the 3.5 millimeter TRRS cable, which enables two-way communication. It's got a really cool phone icon on the back. And the only difference between the two and how you would do that is additionally on Vocaster 2, you can connect your phone via Bluetooth. And that's one of the key differences between the two interfaces. And so what's the process for bringing a phone call in while you're on the podcast? Sure. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. Uh, two different ways to do it, uh, either with a 3.5 millimeter TRRS cable, uh, or I have my phone connected via Bluetooth uh, to the Vocaster 2. Do you want to phone up a friend? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to call my good friend Travarsi, really great artist. Hello? Hey, Travarsi. This is Dan. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? Doing good. I'm on a podcast, and we got you on a podcast here with Steve from Guitar Center. Oh, okay, okay. Hi. Hi, uh, how's it going? We, uh, we wanted to call and talk to you about your car's warranty. Yeah, have you? Oh. Yeah, you haven't been returning our calls about your car's extended warranty. Uh... I think you called me like two or three times before about it, too. We call all the time. <laughs> We're not going to stop. Well, hey, thank you for joining us and talking to us about your uh, car's extended warranty. Uh, Travarsi, we got to get back to the podcast. We're going to have to let you go. <laughs> all right, all guys. Right. Take care. Bye. 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 So, wow, that's super simple. Yeah, we wanted to make it as easy as possible. So let's just say now we're at the end of our podcast. We've made tons of great jokes. Mm -hmm. We've taken phone calls. We played back videos from the computer. How do we take that and then turn it into a published product for people to see? Sure. So the Hindenburg software makes it really easy for content creators to edit and mix. They even have auto levels. Um, it's really easy to set automations just visually by grabbing and uh, setting ducking and things like that by just highlighting and moving the, uh, the regions. Uh, makes it super easy. So Hindenburg is included with Vocaster, with either of the Vocaster units, uh, as well as Squadcast, which is software for recording remote interviews online. And then finally, Acast is the publishing software. Cool. So you would output some sort of a project file. Mm -hmm. 
you send it to ACAST, it uploads it, syncs it to services throughout the world, and you're good to go. Suddenly, you're getting paid to hear your own voice. Wow. That sounds pretty sweet. That's it. So, Dan, before we wrap this up, I just want to say that I've noticed throughout this podcast that uh, there's great off-axis rejection with this DM1 mic. Mm -hmm. So I just want to point out that that's a really great feature. It's heavily directional, and it's mostly going to pick up uh, what you want to hear. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want the bleed from another microphone in case you're doing edits because then it sounds a little bit funny. So yeah, that, that's what we were after when we were choosing the microphones to include. Really nice. So these have been out for what, two months now? About that. Yeah. And I'm sure that through the research that you guys did in creating the product, you had sort of like um, an idea in your mind of what the user set would be. Mm -hmm. Have there been any surprises in the more widespread adoption that you have found? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we never thought of um, was since we have the Bluetooth and the TRRS connection for your phone, you can send audio to your phone too. So all of your computer audio is being streamed to your phone. So if you want to go on TikTok or if you want to go on Instagram and create those viral videos, you can take that high res audio from your computer and from your vocaster and bring that to uh, your social media apps as well. Never thought of that before, but that's something that's been picked up. Wow, that's cool. So you can route the full program mm -hmm. out to the phone. Yeah, all of the inputs, uh, your phone calls, your your music, your computer audio, everything directly out to your apps. That's really cool. So if you just wanted to go live on Instagram mm -hmm. with a pro audio setup, yeah. you're good to go? Yeah. Wow, really nice. Yeah, isn't it cool? So in the two months that these have been out, there probably have been requests for mm -hmm. maybe future updates or something like that. Can you speak to uh, what we might see uh, in future iterations of Vocaster? Yeah, you know, customers always tell you what, what they would love to see in it. And one, one firmware update that's coming very soon. I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about it yet, but I will. It's okay. We're all friends here, right? It's a safe, it's a safe place. Breaking uh, news. Breaking news. Um, the enhance feature. They're going to be user updatable presets in there. So you can adjust your compression. You can adjust your EQ curve. You can toggle on, off, or adjust where the high pass filter is. So it's not just uh, a preset. It's uh, user updatable as well. So let's just say I find some settings mm -hmm. I love for my voice. I can consistently call them back up every time, every podcast, everywhere I go. Yep. You'll be able to either adjust the settings that are currently in there or start from scratch and save your own settings. Wow. Very cool. So some of the features that are in the Vocaster, auto gain and enhance, things like that. Do you think that they may find their way back into some of the other products like Scarlet Claret or any overall learnings from these products getting back in there? You know, we're always uh, wanting to be innovative. So I, I would have to say just to stay tuned. Um, we've done some really cool tech for this that we've never done before in any other interface. So yeah, I would just watch out and see what's coming next. Very cool. Dan, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. It was a really great talk. And uh, we did it all, folks, through Focusrite Vocaster interfaces available now in the one, the two, and studio bundles. So if you want to learn more about these, head to guitarcenter.com or check them out at your local GC.